So Avalu Gold has a lot of different ways that she presents this ethnography. She decides to deflect from the actual study case academic style type of writing and um, a method that she, of using storytelling. So through storytelling, she's able to avoid a generalization by depicting scenes exactly how they were when she experienced them during her study. Um, she believes that it's important to avoid generalization in her ethnographies because she thinks that generalizing um, towards certain subjects creates a separation between herself and her audience and also a separation between herself as the anthropologist or the ethnographer and the people that she's studying. So through her refusal to generalize on the Bedouin culture here in this piece, Writing Women's World, she is able to first avoid a typicality, um, avoid something that may seem like it happens in everyday culture. And um, she does this by discussing specific individuals. In doing this, she allows the reader to know that things are constantly experienced per the individual. So it doesn't mean that everyone in the culture can experience it. It can have different ways of being experienced in the culture itself. So for example, um, in chapter one called Patri Patrilineality, <laughs> She explains how Migdim, Hajj Sagar's wife, gives birth alone by herself. And she's actually very intrigued to this because she doesn't understand why his mother doesn't call out for help as she's giving birth to one of her children. She just kind of goes behind a tent in um, the camp that they were at and decides to just give birth naturally by herself without the help of the other women of the community. Um, and she realizes that this kind of experience differs from person to person within the community. So through generalizing and say that all women give birth by themselves, she would not really be telling the truth in her case study because it was a special, it was a, a special type of example for Hajj Sagar's mother and victim. The third reason is that she, it, allows for a reconstruction of people's arguments. So in focusing on the individual instead of on the culture itself and in avoiding a big generalization of the culture itself, she is able to reconstruct the people's argument which allows for a better understanding from her audience, which means that she can really tap into the audience and make sure that each one realizes, each member of her audience realizes that the women in this culture can experience things differently and can view things as different than what we typically see as an outsider in the culture. She also wants to display the role of Islam in the women's life. She wants to display that Islam is not what Westerners deceive as um, or what Westerners perceive as being oppressive towards women, um, and that women are submissive because of their religion and because of their ties to Islam. Um, she states that many girls consider, many girls and women consider themselves Islam and that this adds to their cultural identity and to their character and who they view themselves, not only as a woman in the culture, but as a, as a human being. So she wants to break away from the generalization that you know, women are oppressed or women are typically submissive within the society that they live in, in this case specifically, the Bedouin society in Egypt. Um, the final goal of her approach to this piece, Writing Women's Worlds, is that she wants to take a humanistic approach. She believes that political motivations as of recent um, towards the Middle East kind of display Middle Eastern cultures in a negative light. And she wants to break away from that 
stereotype and, again, generalization. Um, so she believes that the political motivation inspired her ethnography. She, distra- she strives to depict um, Muslim women in a way that they're meant to be portrayed, not necessarily like the oppressed ideas that we view Islamic women and Muslim women in the West. Um, also, another method that she takes in her humanistic approach to this piece is that she takes herself out of the stories. She tries not to interfere with the characters or her subjects, except when she feels it's necessary. For example, when she wants to um, display that, she wants to interject and ask a follow-up question, or when she's being asked something directly by, say, a male member of the community. Um, Finally, one other way that she takes a humanistic approach is that she constructs chapters of her book around one or two people, one or two women specifically. And in doing this, she can show different um, women's beliefs and views on a certain aspect of the society. So this creates um, more of a balanced way to present the society, she avoids a central character in her study, which again allows for um, an abandonment uh, or which kind of abandons the generalization process that most anthropologies tend to go for. So um, yeah, so the whole purpose of her piece here is to explain the role of women in the society and show that it's actually kind of a feminist approach, even though she kind of wants to stay away from the typical word feminism that we know in the West. Um, she just wants to show these people as who they are, as individuals living in the Bedouin society, and that we need to avoid the generalization and stereotyping of these women that belong to not only this culture, but the Islamic religion and the general Arabic or, you know, Middle Eastern population.